Hey everybody, I'm here with Nick Chi, and he's the founder of Crusoe, and we're here on the beach in Thailand. And I just wanted to ask him a little bit about his story, about uh, how he came to found Crusoe, and uh, yeah, just help you guys find out a little bit more about him. He's a cool guy, so uh, let's get started. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, how do you want to identify yourself? <laughs> uh, yeah, my name is Nick, and I, I guess I, I started this this company about a year ago. It's called Crusoe. It's a it's a candle company. I guess that's the best way that, that I can describe it. When it I, sounds like a lot more than a candle <laughs> company, though. It's, I mean, uh, I think of candles as just like oh, a thing that smells like uh, flowers or whatever. But your goal is a lot different, right? Yeah. Uh, well, it it started out as. I guess from the business aspect, just I wanted to start my own lemonade stand, whatever that would be. <laughs> and I, I felt initially like like candles would be a pretty easy thing to get into, but I, um, I, I started to recognize this market of candles that were scented, uh, I guess, to appeal to guys. Mm -hmm. And I, I really liked the product, and it was something that I felt like I, I could, I had a shot at creating. and. Um, but I, I realized that I didn't want to just create stuff for people, yeah. and that just wouldn't genuinely inspire me. Okay. And uh, and I, I knew that whatever I wanted to create, or whatever company I was going to dedicate my time to, I, I wanted it to, I guess, help me become the person that I wanted to become. I mean, that's why we're, that's why we create companies, I guess, uh, is to become a certain type of person, whether financially or uh, be a lifestyle mm -hmm. and so I, I thought a lot about I guess the the kind of person that I wanted to become like who that even is and I guess my it, it started just to make a very long story short from just a place of a, just a very large amount of loss in a very short period of time and uh, really yeah and and I guess so it's just like lots of a, lot, a few relationships that were very important to me mm -hmm. family and and others and uh, lost all my money and really? my, my job and you wow. know everything that was that was just uh, that I previously held all these external things that I previously used to I guess determine how valuable I was and I realized that I, that was what I was using to determine how valuable I was as a person and I guess I, I told myself at that point I'm, and I'm glad all of this happened because it, it brought me to the conclusion that if I were to lose all of these superficial things again I'd, I'd want to have something at my core that was just unshakable and that I would would still um, that would still retain a sense of self-worth if I were to lose all that again so in my mind I, I started to envision this Nick that I wanted to become and, uh, and so I is it Nick Crusoe <laughs> <laughs> well so it's it's just Crusoe because and and so to describe a little more about the product itself I'm I'm personifying this this product, this tangible thing, and I, I feel like um, so the the bigger vision of Crusoe is to inspire, essentially inspire adventure in those who seek it, mm -hmm. amongst a, a I guess a, our generation of, of people who are kind of sleepwalking through life. They they don't really question the, their everyday activities, and I feel like they've kind of become I don't know maybe a, a little bit dull to excitement. Yeah. And I, through my own endeavor towards becoming that kind of person that, that does not fall for that trap, I also want to give that to others. And so Crusoe is kind of, it more serves, more so serves as a tangible means of, a tangible reminder um, that I'm out there doing this and that others out there are, are doing the same thing as yeah. a way to inspire. And um, Yeah, it's fascinating yeah. Your, uh, the story you just started to tell for, for two reasons actually. Because um, you know they always say like uh, or like the, the mythology of like the phoenix rising from the ashes. Like it is very very cool to watch uh, how people can turn negative experiences and how everything goes at wrong, goes wrong at the same time into creating something really really awesome. So that's really cool. How that was consistent with your story as well. And actually, just a few minutes before this uh, before this interview, um, he was asking me why I do this or not why I do this, but like what, what's how does this typically go and. Um, you know, part of that's like why, right? Like, because what, what's the point? And we've been hanging out for a couple of days here in Thailand, and actually, that was the first time I had heard that story, uh, and that was cool. And I didn't know that was the background behind Crusoe, and that's fascinating. And, and giving people a platform to share those types of experiences, 
Um, that may not have come up otherwise if we had just had regular conversation. So that's really yeah. cool that you can share that with, with me and with, with anybody who watches this. Um, so, so that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, actually, I'm going to check and make sure this is still okay. I'll cut this yeah, out. Yeah, sure. I think it might have died. Oh, yeah, it's still going. Sweet. Okay, cool. um, okay. So tell me a bit more about uh, the actual product itself the kind of experience and inspiration specifically that you're trying to impart behind upon people who buy this product. So I guess I started from a point of, well, identifying who that <laughs> strongest version of me is. And, yeah. and in my, I guess my playful mind, I was thinking it was this intersection of like a James Bond meets Jack Sparrow meets yeah. Jack Gatsby, like that, okay. that guy, like a refined, uh, youthful like that. guy who's, I don't know, adventurous and, and dispassionate, loves people. And so I thought about what kind of, what would his environment look like? Mm -hmm. And what kind of things would he have that would kind of align with that, that image that he's giving off? And so I thought a lot about that when creating this product. Um, so the, it is a candle, but they're encased in these double fashioned whiskey glasses. And I, I thought a lot about, so, well, I guess the reason why I did that one is because when, you typically burn a candle, the application ceases yeah. to exist. There's no value afterwards. And there's just, you have an empty container that you yeah. throw away. But I thought it'd be really cool to have, I guess, that reminder still exists even after the candle dissipated mm -hmm. in the form of something that, um, that kind of Crusoe would, uh, would use. And yeah. so a whiskey glass. And uh, throughout the... I guess my iterations, I thought a lot about how it looks in the candle form as well as the whiskey glass form. And I thought a lot about how, uh, I guess, these different details, like the wick itself is made out of wood, the, okay. the cedar wicks, uh, the scents, I, I used, I was very specific about the kinds of scents that I wanted to use. The first one is called aged oak and leather, and it, okay. it has elements of, kind of like natural elements, but also it has uh, some cologne oil in it as well. Okay. So it's it's something that um, I guess guys would like smelling <laughs> like and, ha and maybe uh, have exist in their rooms. Yeah, it's certainly more appealing than having your room smell like jasmine or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to steer away from the, the typical floral and yeah. sweet scents. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And so describe to me what, what the experience is like when somebody receives this is a Crusoe candle um, of like unveiling it and like a big part of what you offer right is um, an experience and not just like a sensory experience of lighting a candle that smells cool to guys um, and not just like having a whiskey glass afterwards but there's something something else apart like the story behind all of it yeah that I found I found really fascinating and very very unique to this type of product so do you want to talk a little bit about that yeah so I, I thought a lot about that as well just how what the experience would be like when the person opens the, the package and I, I very much wanted them to feel like they're receiving this, this shipment from Crusoe from some part of the world. Okay. Because I, I feel like there are, I guess I wanted to truly elicit that, or instill that excitement and imagination mm -hmm. within, within people. I guess the, the, the most, uh, I guess the strongest way to inspire action is by eliciting a certain emotional response yeah. from people. And, and that comes in the form of the scent, but also in the form of just the, how, what it looks like when they un open the, the mm -hmm. box. And so they receive their package, and on top is a, a handwritten note from Crusoe. And I'm I'm planning to scale these products in the form of chapters or just different stories. And each so each candle is from a different. So let's say chapter one mm -hmm. it was called Embark, and it's from some part of the world, and. Uh, it, it tells the story of Crusoe and it's meant to inspire people to kind of find Crusoe or follow him. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, I intentionally wrote it with, I guess, the, the mindset that I was speaking directly to my customer. Yeah. And I use customer, has, uh, I guess, with hesitation because I, I see it more so as just a community or the, mm -hmm. the, a group of people who I... Yeah. Who, not only am I trying to, I guess, inspire, but also who are kind of uh, keeping the bar high for me and, and 
inspiring me to go out and, and do these things and keep, continue to just follow what it is, these crazy things that, <laughs> that I'm trying to pursue because it's, it's tough to do it alone. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the community is, is really everything. So I, I, uh, I guess I value them as much as hopefully they value me or the, the product. Well, from what I've heard uh, from your initial customer feedback, it's they sound pretty enthusiastic. And uh, yeah, so it, it's cool how you know each each chapter has its own story and its own moral behind it, its own um, little uh, nugget of inspiration. And I've actually looked at the uh, the letter that's included, and it's really really cool. It's like a handwritten, um, like old fashioned on like tea stained paper, and it really looks like a. Um, you can imagine a guy with like a Captain Jack Sparrow hat in, on a boat writing that with ink or something. It's really, really cool. And, and we'll show you in a second um, the, the product and, and what it looks like and uh, let you judge for yourself. Cool. So tell me a bit about uh, your journey to where you are now to, um, yeah, like what's your background? I know you, you lived in San Francisco for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, talk about where you're originally from and just sort of like a quick overview of your life path to, to what brought you here today. Yeah, well, I, I did grow up in California, and right after college I went to to Korea to work for a few years, and I, I traveled around Asia for a little bit, and it, I guess it helped me, I guess, get a taste of what else could be out there in life. Yeah. And, and then I came back to San Francisco, and I, I you know, settled down with a, with a job, mm-hmm. and, I mean, it was, it's been a great experience, and I'm still, um, I guess, making my my full transition to working on Crusoe full-time. Yeah. But, um, so I came back and throughout that time was when I, I experienced a lot of the, the loss that I was describing. And I, I kind of, uh, I guess I ran away from these problems and I traveled around Asia again. And, really? But it, it, uh, it, it wasn't, I guess I wanted to relive the experience that I had before where I was just, you know, <laughs> working there, but it wasn't the same. And, um, so yeah, after I came back to, to San Francisco and I just, I, for a year straight, I just had my head down and I just worked on this project and I, every, every lunch break, actually, I would, I would, so I had 15 minutes during my breaks, not my lunch, my lunch. <laughs> I was, was going to say minutes. 15 minutes for lunch is pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. But I would have th- these 15 minute breaks and I would just, uh, took exactly 15 minutes to take a full lap around the building. So I would just plug into music that inspired me or podcasts from people that were out here and just kind of just think about what this product would look like and um, I mean it's it's it was really tough especially because before this product existed people thought I was crazy just (laughs) yeah tell me a a bit about that like what did people what do people think of what you're doing now when you first started what was the feedback yeah well I guess it's it really is true that you have to believe in it before anybody else does. I mean, you can imagine when I'm describing this to people, you know, saying that I'm creating this candle that's meant to inspire people, and it's based upon this this story about Crusoe, and uh, you know, people. I mean, I had friends who straight up told me that I this is ridiculous. I should give up and pursue something completely different. I I mean, I had that. And, Tactfully stated. <laughs> and and uh, you know, I was a little bit taken aback, but at the same time, I was it kind of uh, surprised me in a positive way because I, I knew I've heard of these things happening for mm-hmm. anybody who's pursuing something that is unique or yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, wow, I'm, I'm actually on this path. <laughs> like th- that was a uh, It's a good thing if people call you crazy, yeah? Yeah, well, I mean, it's tough because sometimes it's, if you hear that over and over, it's easy to think that you are, it's easy to believe them. Mm-hmm. Um, and you really have to find... I always returned to the place of why I was doing what I was doing and who and who I was trying to serve and who I was becoming through this whole thing. Um, this process of getting to this point was very much uh, part of, I guess, who Crusoe is. And it will continue to be that way as the company expands. Um, I wouldn't feel confident, I guess, trying to inspire people if I was just, if I wasn't going through my own obstacles and yeah. trying to solve them myself, I would feel like a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting perspective, actually, because I think a lot of people, um, they might kind of view it the opposite way, that they feel like a fraud if they do have obstacles, if they don't have everything sorted out. So it's interesting that you, and you actually, I, I like your perspective better, right? It's like, we all have challenges. I'm, you know, you, you're, you're going through your own challenges and you say, I, I want to share that with other people and share the lessons I learned. 
Uh, that's, that's really fantastic. And, and I think it, it kind of needs to be that transparent. Or And I intentionally have the story so that Crusoe feels only a few steps ahead. Mm-hmm. And, and I guess I would say I'm only a few steps ahead, maybe, um, of, of the recipients of the product. Probably not even, but just in the sense that I'm actually just, that I've decided to do this thing. Yeah. And that, for some customers, not all of them, is the only difference between me and them. And, yeah. and hopefully if, if I, you know, down the road know that they made a decision to pursue whatever it is that, that lights them up, that is scary, uh, I'll, I'll feel like all of this this time was worth it. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's a hard thing to pursue uh, like what, what you are inspired by and what you really want to do, because usually at the end of the day, that's something that's difficult, it's unusual, people won't necessarily support you right away. Although I will say, uh, it's been interesting hearing you talk about your feedback back home about what you're doing, and then also your, your feedback um, that I've seen given to you from people here, because we're, we're in uh, an area with other entrepreneurs that we're hanging out with, and as he tells people about his idea, about what he's working on, uh, I think it's been pretty much 100% positive. Like, there's like, oh, you could do this or you could do that, but like everybody loves your idea. Uh, and so that's kind of also the power of pursuing what you're passionate about and being uh, around other people who are pursuing similar types of types of projects that they're also passionate about, is that, um, you know, everybody can recognize the value in, in something that's new and that's different uh, if you're accustomed to thinking that way. If you're stuck in a, a cubicle back home in a very traditional type job, it's hard to think that way. And it's like, oh no, different, bad. Uh, but it's been cool to see that, that kind of feedback for you here. Yeah, I've, I've been very humbled by it. And uh, I, I um, have been continuously inspired by you guys too. So I, I'm always reminded. <laughs> I rem- it's a constant reminder for me of just how important the environment is. So. Yeah. Yeah, like, was, and I know it's cliche, but like the whole five people you're most around. Yeah, <laughs> that, that Jim yeah. Rohn quote. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, it's very true, though. Very, very true. Um, it's I, I remember pre entrepreneurial environments and then post entrepreneurial environments and being plugged in the right communities. It's literally night and day. Like anytime you yeah. want to do something new, learn about something, partner with somebody on something. Uh, it's such a struggle if you're kind of like not in the right community or environment. But then if you're plugged into the right places, you're living in the right place, or, or you're just plugged in with the right crowd, even online, um, all of a sudden everything becomes that much easier, that much faster to start. Uh, and it just feels like everything gets accelerated, which I found f- uh, fantastic when I started doing that. Yeah, and on the topic of being transparent and feeling like a fraud, I think it's important for people to know that Crusoe is, is very human. I'm not trying to paint him as this, you know, like this Superman character that ha- doesn't have flaws. And I'll try my best to expose those flaws in Crusoe because people, I guess, a lot of time will think, well, maybe not those who saw me in the beginning, but now will think that I'm, you know, like light years ahead of, uh, and I guess I'm a person who's in a place that's unattainable for, I don't know. And, and people feel discouraged by that. Like yeah. they, like they We're on the beach in Thailand, but so can you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's meant to make them feel like it's, it's possible. Yeah. Whatever they have, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. So uh, does Crusoe wear a pirate hat or <laughs> drink rum? Or <laughs> I guess he no. drink whiskey, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I, I do drink whiskey. Um, I, I don't know, Crusoe is, and that's why I don't put, that's why I didn't write Nick Crusoe. I, I yeah. want Crusoe to be whoever, it is that that person envisions. Okay. And for me, I know what that person looks like, but I know that's not going to be the same as somebody yeah. else, and it shouldn't be. They have everyone has their unique thing that they can contribute, and I, I definitely want people to embrace that. Nice. So tell me a bit about uh, your first uh, bit of feedback, your, your plans going forward. Uh, how, how do you plan on expanding this, and, um, and you know, what are some goals, uh, like the numbers of people you want to reach, or? Um, I don't know, just some goals going forward with this project. Yeah, well, I, I just sent my first sample to uh, a store, which is, I mean, I, I guess maybe down the road, like I'll be more used to that, but yeah. for me- That's, that's I, a big hurdle. Yeah. <laughs> just getting your first store. <laughs> just, and I, I, I'm just waiting for feedback on that, but I, I would love to see Crusoe exist um, just in multiple stores throughout the U.S., maybe just starting out in California even. Do you see this as like a movement uh, of maybe influencing the, what it means to, to receive um, like even a candle or, um, yeah, just w- what are you trying to create in terms of that? Yeah, um, well, I would love for, I would love to see a community around this if possible. It is it is very much less about the, the product itself mm-hmm. being a candle. Yeah. Um, the candle more serves as a vehicle for just 
a small reminder for for this community and and uh, yeah, I would love to see it uh, international just seeing how it, it does in Asia and just connecting people through I guess that understanding that it's it's scary to pursue whatever it is that they want to pursue mm -hmm. and I would love to I mean the the stretch goal for me is seeing this in duty-free stores across airports like yeah I could see that it would make sense as, as a product uh, given that it's I'm going towards the direction of artisan product uh, or a higher end candle I could see it being next to some colognes or whatever else mm -hmm. you see there so I mean that would be like my vision there and and in terms of just my market presence yeah but, yeah but the effect that I would like to have that would make me feel like this whole thing was meaningful is just knowing that I there's a community that has been created that um, feels inspired to pursue what they want and I, I like how the, uh, the way you're going about this your, your method is very very different right instead of um, just like writing blog posts about it or, or filming videos about it, right? Um, you're giving like a sensory experience of, um, you know, somebody opening up a candle and having a certain kind of visual experience, a kinesthetic experience of yeah, like, scent too. yeah, it's and then they powerful. light the candle and it's like this whole storyline and um, sensation of, of the actual experience of opening each each episode. So that that's really cool uh, to combine that kind of sensory experience with an actual positive message to do these things because. Uh, it's one thing to to read about it, to see it, but to actually kind of have a taste, to have a have an experience. Uh, yeah, maybe you should like make your candles lickable too. Like, actually, have a literal <laughs> taste. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that, that's really really cool, and I think uh, that'll resonate with a lot of people, especially people who are more uh, kinesthetic or, or, or you know or they require that experience to like get them motivated because it's not as exciting sometimes just to read about it. You you want to get a little taste and experience it yourself. Um, so yeah, I, I hope for you that. Uh, you do inspire people to, to do this, and I think it is a fantastic thing. It's worth doing, and uh, yeah, I, I, I think you'll you'll touch a lot of people with this product. Thanks, man. Cool. So actually, tell me, uh, how do you spell Crusoe? It's a little bit different. It's like French, it's, right? Yeah. Well, that's another thing. I, I had a lot of trouble thinking of even the name, but Crusoe's. Yeah. I like it though. It's good. Uh, it's thanks. Good. Yeah. It's a C R U S E A U. Okay. Uh, just the E A U was was added to give it kind of a, a European look. Okay. Like so Crusoe.com, right? Crusoe.com, yeah. One more time, spell it. C R U S E A U. Okay. Dot com. And, and <laughs> I'll quiz you on that later. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's good stuff. So he's got his first batch out. Um, he'll be releasing his second batch relatively soon, right? Yeah, I, I, I would love to have it launched before Valentine's Day, but okay. we'll see. Yeah, yeah. And uh, part of the thing uh, that he's offering is also like a, su a subscription to uh, a monthly, monthly, correct? Yeah. Okay, monthly episode of different adventures, different stories, different candles, different scents. And they are, they do smell fantastic, by the way. Um, they are very, very not feminine, which is like the only candle I've ever smelled that wasn't that way. Um, and if you if you light them in your room, uh, you'll have quite a sensory experience. So uh, yeah, he, he, actually right now, if you go to the website, uh, the first round is sold out, but you can opt into his, his listserv to get notified of the next shipment. And yeah, I encourage you to, to experience it and sign up and see for yourself.